Yeah, well, what Energy happened? already taking parts of the strategy off anyway. The early ban on Trundle to not let Ray get the dedicated strong split pusher. A Kindred ban coming through yet again. And I believe that's another red side Kindred ban, if I remember properly. So, yep. Uh, they last Apex hamstringing themselves. Last bans on red side were Nidalee, Kindred, and Karma. And now Trundle and has so been Apex added. taking two of the bans that Energy was using. So, now Swain, Rise, Zyra for Kiwi Kid, which was banned previously, on the table, as well as Vladimir. So there's going to be a lot of things coming through this pick and ban that people are going to be running around for. Rek'Sai also on the table here with three jungle bans. Right, yeah, they're really targeting the champion pools, which also means that, by the way, a first pick Rek'Sai is not completely out of the, uh, you know, out of the, the possibility here when you saw the energy had first picked at red side the first round, so that was certainly a high priority. I don't know if Rek'Sai is specifically first pick worthy, but in some of this context, you can kind of see why you do it. What? The actual ban oh. comes through as Rek'Sai, which honestly I think is, is a mistake because you can, I think, bargain the Rek'Sai for like a Vladimir, for a Swain, uh -huh. and maybe they're, they're, they're counting down, right? Like Vladimir's up there, Swain's up there, Zyra's up there, and if that's the top three, then one of those bans does make sense. You get one for two. Yeah, but Shrimp is a fantastic Rek'Sai. If they first pick it, then that's great. You baited them into taking that Rek'Sai that you banned away. And what's the difference between Rek'Sai and Shrimp's Graves? You know, it's that that's really the next thing down the tier list. Gragas? Might have to go a little bit deeper too. Yeah, the Gragas, I know he can play that champion. Lee Sin, you know, like. But at that point, you get a Vladimir, you get sure, there's a Vladimir Echo, and a Swain. You get your whatever you want. You get the Swain, and yeah, there they go. Yeah, there's the instant hover on Swain, no surprise. Vladimir, you can see the deliberation on Energy's faces. They said, which one is worth it? We had first pick Zyra before. We've we know Vladimir's huge. We know Swain's really big. It goes unbanned. They say Vlad is the best of the three. You guys get the other ones. Actually, Zyra might not even be contested. We're seeing the hovers go back and forth. Swain, I think, has to be locked in here. No, I think Zyra is a Kiwi Kid support special right now. Yeah. But then they first picked it one time, as though it like, was contested. So Caitlyn actually still the grab right here. Lucian off the table. Caitlyn, the early pick up there. Apex really wanted to play this champion on Apollo. And I mean, so far he's been successful with it, so I can't complain too much. And Swain for Vlad, the question is which one was better? Energy thinks Vlad was the case, but we'll see. Yeah, and I think it might be, well, I mean, Quas swapped to Ghost. So it might be a Vladimir top here for Quas and picking that even over the Swain. So it's showing where his priorities lie here. Sure. If that ends up being a champion for him, because there's still a lot on the table for GBM. They could go mix damage here, get themselves, I mean, they could get themselves a zillion and be, become incredibly annoying. Yeah, <laughs> you kill the Vladimir, it doesn't matter. Ever. You put bombs on the Vladimir and he delivers them. <laughs> In the Sanguine Pool. Yeah, that's always going to be annoying. And right here, I think this is the, the expected yeah. pick right now for energy. I think both these champions are no surprise to anybody on either side of the draft. The Zyra comes to the Kiwi Kid. And yes, you are getting Gragas out of Santorin. And uh, talking about Zara's a bit more, I want to, because I, I, I really enjoy support atomization. Um, what Kiwi Kid actually ran last night, I was incorrect in my uh, look at the numbers, but he was hybrid pen marks and then magic pen both glyphs and quints. Oh. Um, which is pretty standard we're seeing from Zyra. They're almost all running just full magic pen everywhere. Um, in one of the other series today, there was a Zyra support, and that was a very similar room page there as well. So. Uh, you know, the full Magic Band, Leandri's Rush is what's standard for that champion. Makes it a big damage dealer, which means you don't need as much damage elsewhere. You can play more tanks. That's true. And Zyra support has always been, you get into the post-game lobby, you look at the damage dealt. You're probably like, the top. how? How? You, like, just the little bit of damage that the plants do add up so quickly, and especially with the spawn rate now on seeds. Yeah. Zyra is really good. But Keen, being a little cute, went through all of his, all of his champions. We even saw like the AP Malphite in there that he hovered over mm -hmm. for a second, but the Echo ultimately coming through. So Swain, Echo, both flex picks can be played top, can be played mid. And we're just looking for a jungler here for Shrimp at the end of the day, although it could end up being a jungle Echo. I do suppose that that is a possibility. Yeah, but by and large, we're expecting it to be a jungle pickup at the last right here. And there's no rush in, you know, grabbing it. The Kragos was grabbed a while, grabbed a while ago anyway. Uh, energy locking in Ash for themselves. Those are the Ash Zyra, the old Cloud9 special. Sneaky and Lemonation would be proud, but honestly, both these champs I think super, super strong. Yeah. And yeah, it, it now, even though your your support champion is now a damage dealer, will you make your AD carry the utility? And to lock it all in, actually, it will be Vladimir in the top lane with a Gangplank in the mid. And I think this comp comes together pretty well. You've got a nice bit of durability with the Vlad and the Gragas, and you've got so much damage coming out. Four really big damage threats to lock in the lineup there for energy with the Gangplank mid, GBM, 
so good at the champion. Yeah, and now you have that mixed damage source. You're able to have somebody that you need armor against, so the Echo can't just build full, uh, full magic resistance. And now the Ash and the Gangplank side by side. See what happens there. Ash also coming back into pro play mm -hmm. very recently. It became right. very popular in Korea after MSI and after the patch hit. Versus yeah. 10. Kind of like in the top five most common AD carries right now. Yeah. Right? Lucian's up there, Sivir's up there, etc. We're seeing some Callista still, but Ash definitely strong. And, and I'm curious to see as those builds innovate as well. For most of the uh, beginning of the year, Hurricane was the go-to item on her, but we saw some static shift from people as well. Now Lee Sin will be the grab here for Shrimp. So he is getting not the Echo, but Lee Sin. When he actually played way back in, I think, week one of the North American LCS, actually, he played on uh, in, uh, summer 2016. I forget which lineup it was, but uh, didn't have the best game there, actually. Yeah, that was on Energy. Yeah, I think so. That was on the team he's playing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was GBM who carried him out of a really, really rough start to the game. Now he's against that guy. And once again in his first match of the North American LCS, this time for the summer split here. And this time is kind of the intended starting lineup here. Apex coming in. Well, they've both got these two crazy sustained mages here. A Swain and a Vladimir on either side. Long range marksmen with the Ash and the Caitlyn across from each other. And honestly, it's going to be fun to see how these teams can come, uh, can come out with this one. Energy have tons of damage output overall. Yeah. Four big carries. Uh, Apex more conventional with really two. The more I think about it, the more I really like the composition from Energy. There's a lot of global pressure here. Ash Arrow, Gangplank Ultimate, two TPs, only one TP on the side of Apex, which I believe it's only top lane. I don't think there was a TP taken in that mid lane. I think it's Ghost and Flash still for Keen, and yes, it is on that Swain. Okay, well, we'll see how this all plays out. Now, guys, we are here in the game two of this best of three. Energy needs to win this one to pull it out to a third game. So the question is, can they do it? If you think so, let us know. Tweet hashtag NRG. If you think they can't, if you think it's a 2-0 for Apex, hashtag APX went on Twitter. We are at Elable Esports, and we are here into game two of the series. This would actually close out the stream on this one as the second match of the day between Energy and Apex. And the question is, how will these teams can play? Energy, for the first 10 minutes, looked like a 180 from, from yesterday's match. They looked like not even really a team. Uh, there's actually a, an interview that Scar did with Kiwi Kid, uh, and Kiwi Kid was like, that game was brutal. It was, I mean, it was, the whole series was just super rough, and it was it was terrible. And then the beginning of game one looked so much better. Energy were on point. Centaur was ganking. The lane's getting ahead. They're making some cross map plays. Check. The teleports were in. Right, but like, everything that went wrong didn't go wrong, and things that could go right did go right. And it was so nice to see them do really well and then after 12 minutes, they just stopped, again, being proactive. And the game just stalled out. And once again, we got to see Apex keep their cool, play a solid game. Eventually, Keen went off. Apollo had the most damage in the game that game, just very consistent on that Caitlyn. And Apex was just the better team once it came into the mid game there. And that's the concern I have for energy, is we only see small glimmers of hope. Sometimes GBM 1v9s. Sometimes they actually have a good first 12 minutes, but I'm not seeing the full picture yet from energy yet. And energy, they've always had a really rough early game, even last year. Right. And now, this team, this team comp really doesn't care. You could have that late game. This is the team comp where you get behind 5K and you go, don't worry guys, we got late game. We got team fight over these guys. Yeah. And they're good. And you go and you look at Apex, and Shrimp is kind of the odd one out in the composition. This Lee Sin doesn't really slate himself in very easily. Oh, he pushed them out so they could just sneak into the bush here, and there's no ward down. It's special. He might get the tag. Gets the slow and centaur. I don't think anyone's in range, though. Lee Sin Q. No, they are. Well, was it going to matter more. enough? He's going to get the stun, the flash, auto attack, and wow, they do catch him down. Uh, that surprises me so heavily, but it does actually land it all. The kill comes through the first blood against Santorin. Energy. At least once per series, something catastrophically wrong happens in the first level of the game. That is rough stuff. I want to check real quick. Santorin, he did have Body Slam learned at a certain point. I don't know if he ever cast it. I forget. I don't remember him casting it during the chase. You're watching right now, Zyrene, so we can watch it and see what happens. But Oh, he had Body Slam to go up towards the river. Comes back from cooldown. Spots special. Oh. Body Slam's away he from Expecial. And instead of flashing the wall to get away, he flashes straight forward so that everyone can just walk up to him. So yeah. he, he was a bit greedy on the flash, honestly. He, yeah, he'd like, gone too far out. He actually started walking out of that bush when everybody on Apex went in from the mid. So he had to body slam back into safety, but they had already seen him yeah. and they caught him. Like, if you played that over again and said, hey, Santorin, you're getting attacked by five people, you could have done it in a different way to get over that wall. But sometimes you just don't expect that to matter that much. I mean, how often have you just seen like, okay, Abram, you hit me, that's cute, and you walk away. 
Nine out of ten of the time, it doesn't matter. In this case, it <laughs> did, and it's a first blood. The kill did, by the way, go to Ray. Mm -hmm. So instead of instead of being first blooded, he has first blood himself. Four hundred gold in the echo. He gets an extra Doran's ring. That'll feel good when your apex is top laner. Yeah, Doran's ring, dark seal, whatever he wants. Right. Like you already won lane being zero two to three and zero. Yeah. <laughs> Negative true. win lane it's being true. one up before minions spawn. Like, if Ray doesn't smash this lane, something's weird. That's the curse, though. If you get ahead, you're going to lose that lane. No. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, first blood loses you the lane. Yeah, the issue is Santorin's having some audio issues, which I thought he didn't play with game sound before. I remember that was a fun fact about Santorin, oh. that he didn't play with game sound. Well, maybe you can't hear his teammates. Something, last but year. Yeah. Yeah, we're seeing the text come through and make sure that everything's hooked up properly. You know, turn it off, turn it out again, make sure it's plugged in. The standard first response. Uh, when things are going wrong, and if it's anything worse, then we'll we'll keep you guys updated. Maybe it's a computer restart. Who knows? But we'll get ourselves back into the game as soon as we possibly can when everything's sorted out and Centaurin can hear his teammates and everything else properly. Now, talking about the overall matchup, you said you really like the champ select. I agree. I think Energy have continued to do very well with their drafts. Um, I like their lineup. Again, it's four big carries. Kiwi Kid can hard carry. Honestly, OQ on Ash can do it. The Gangplank, the Vladimir, certainly all options. We've even seen games where Santorin was able to hard farm really well in the Gragas and, and be the most farm member of the game for a while and be the super tank. And, you know, all those tools are available. The question is, though, even when Energy pick great late game, they often come into situations where they don't have the ability to survive long enough. Their game one loss to Envy. We, you know, I was casting with Azale, and it's like, well, yeah, they've got the late game, but they lost Dragons on cooldown. They lost turrets without even having, having to fight for kills, and, and the game was out of hand too quickly. And in this case, the only really good wave clear that energy has is just GBM. And he can only mm -hmm. be one place at a time, maybe two if you count the ultimate. Hey, man, Kiwi Kid will get up there, too. He'll root the entire minion wave. and <laughs> It'll hurt it, but it doesn't. it's not like it a Victor Laser it. or a Sivir, you know? I mean, it's yeah. there, right? Like, you get the plants up, oh. you get some damage. Kiwi Kid... Not having any audio issues. Feeling something. He's jamming out. <laughs> He's actually making his own audio, because <laughs> I don't hear anyone else singing or humming, but something's going on in his ears, and he's a happy man. I got to say, one of the things I like most about Kiwi Kid, that man has almost a perennial smile. He's a great guy. And he's, he's always got like the fans too. Um, if you guys didn't watch the series last night, I, I told the story, but uh, in the break between game two and game three, uh, uh, we'd ask, oh, who's going to win this one, right? To get the crowd hyped up. And they were like, Kiwi kid, <laughs> just him. Like there <laughs> no, was he, energy. He's not a team. <laughs> no, he's just going to 1v9, you know? Uh, looks like we have Santorin reconnected now to the game. So his game or computer has been restarted. We'll see if the issues are better this time around. Yeah, I would be very surprised if there was a remake for this because there was nothing that an audio issue really would have helped him with. I wouldn't imagine so. So, And either way, it's uh, obviously game of record at this point. Mm -hmm. So, Well, sadly, Santorin's still looking non-plus something clearly incorrect with the settings right now, so we still have some time to go to talk about this one. We talked about the energy comp a little bit and talking about their struggles overall. I want to kind of dive into Apex a bit more. Okay. So... In the first game, they clearly tried to put a lot of emphasis on Ray. Like, one of the reasons that the bot lane tower dive was a two for one, you know, the nine minute mark or so was, well, Shrimp went to go get Ray a Rift Hero. That was like a key mm -hmm. part of their strategy. We've seen games where it goes uncontested. This is a pre 10 minute, make sure it goes on Trundle. And so it seems like proactively, this team wants their top laner to carry. Yeah. And Ray has the potential to do so. Uh, Pastry Time was talking to us about it and said that when he plays, he goes off. Like, he's actually a really good top laner. He didn't see play because of the fact they already had two Koreans on EDG, like you said at the start. But if that's the guy that they just picked up and they're able to integrate him into this roster, they do seem to be able to give him resources. I'm going to keep track of this guy because his CS seemed really good. He seemed like he was continuing to just stay on par and that he knew how to pressure and he knew when to, it's funny enough to say, but he knows when to apply the right amount of pressure that he pulls somebody to him and has to give his life up for it. Mm -hmm. I think I saw one overstep from Ray. There was the one where like they were going to get the Ocean Drake anyway, and, and that was top. a yeah. bit much. But yeah, honestly, I'm always a fan of the top laners that play like the right amount of yeah. over-aggressive in a way. And the first player I think about this is actually way back with Hotshot GG. Back when he's like playing like the top lane Shogat and the top lane Nidalee. Right. And he's literally dying to let a turret go down like he knows he's going to die in a 1v3 but the rest of clg was pushing the bot lane that was like the first i'd really seen like the sacrificial split pushing like normally you think of like oh it's a jacks and he kills someone then kills the turret afterwards but it was like the hot shot gg style of split pushing was you're gonna kill me so that we kill a turret and that was like that was the first like i'm 300 gold i mean i guess 450 that's, 
Right, yeah, but that's 900 gold and map control. And and that was, that was I mean, way back, like, 2011, 2010 yeah. status. Like, that was the kind of the play style. And, you know, props to Hotshot for being one of the pioneers of that. Um, and and it doesn't show up in stats because your scoreline is like, well, I'm 2 and it 4. Does. It's like, it you're 2 and 4, but that 4 is really 4 turret kills in a way, right? And and, and Ray was doing a fair bit of that. Some small oversets, but, uh, but by and large, I think he's been... You know, a great split pusher. You saw them early pick Trundle for him for the matchup before. And now they've given him the Echo, which is, in many people's opinion, you know, the top laner. Maybe it's Maokai, but maybe it's Echo. And a double doors are going to start his laning phase. got to feel real good. Yeah, it really depends on the composition you're running. And I think that Echo slates into this one well. You can actually double up with the root from the uh, Swain. And also the stun from Braum. So I think that Ray's in a really good position to... Slayed into this team, like I said, but Shrimp is kind of the odd one out. This Lee Sin is kind of just an early game jungler that you have. Yeah. And the kickback is a little bit appeal, but you want you want to run into the enemy team with this comp with your solo laners. You want to run into them. You want to get on the GP. You want to get on the Vladimir. Maybe he kicks the Vladimir away. Mm -hmm. And that's the other thing. So of note, Keen, I believe, is running uh, Deathfire Touch on Swain right here. I don't know if that's actually typical for the champion. We haven't gotten to see it a lot in competitive, but... The little red mastery mark showed up when he landed Torment on his opponent, so. Looks like going for the heavy burn damage here. Plants coming up. OQ and Kiwi could really try to push back Expecial and Apollo. In the previous game, the Apex duo had won the bot lane, the two-on-two -two matchup. We are now with uh, quite a few different champions in a different situation. Ray actually was part of the lane swap, but now has to teleport down to the bot lane to be part of this fight. So Ray gets a Doran's Ring. He starts with Shrimp on the top side, and he gets donated one jungle creep, backs, buys another potion, and then TPs in. So he had three potions when he arrived to this lane. He's gonna immediately need to start bullying Quas because he has EXP advantage from the first level. Level two surprises him with the level lead. Look at the damage up, but he got there. Ray saying, This is exactly the timing I wanna go for. It's before you think it was gonna happen. And there it is. Quas, though, getting his sustain back up. Refillable. Tags the minion. Yeah, and refillable potion boots of speed just. Of course, he had burned his own teleport to get in the lane as well, and we are now into the matchup. Keen pushing aggressively into GBM. But looks like the Gangplank will have the better farm. Ah, oh, missed the parlay there. Yeah, a lot of minions to be picked up here. Yeah. And this is what's going to happen with Gangplank. You just want to play safe. You want to farm up. He gets that bonus gold from the parlay anyway, so helps him scale. Yeah, shouldn't be too hard for him. In the top lane, though, it's just constant pressure. OQ and Kiwi Kid, you were talking about the interview that he uh, he did. They like to play that like there's no jungler. Yeah. They constantly shove, and that's what the Zyra is. The Zyra is constant pressure. They both like to do this. They both like to be underneath the enemy's tower, shooting them, harassing them, trying to win the lane. And what's a Braum going to do to stop a Zyra from doing this? Keep in mind, the Flash is already burned by a special to get the level one advantage, to get the first blood. Santor now looking for a bit of vengeance in this one. And coming to support his team as they've already been pushing in. From, yeah, he cues a minion, then takes more plant damage. There's two shots right there. Whittle them down. Life is oh. sad. <laughs> the simultaneous death scream. Got 30 to 15 there. in minion. Santorin did not choose to actually go for the dive. They couldn't get enough damage dealt to make it worth the time and the effort. Yeah, but I mean... Do you really need to dive them when you're almost double their CS already? Just sure. keep doing this, and then eventually you'll chunk them out of lane. Out of sustain, no potions exactly. on both members of the Apex bottom lane. And not only are they up, you know, 15 CS, but they've already, as you said, burned through the four potions that Apex came with. That's another 200 gold of consumables that's now been drunk and will never come back in right here. So energy honestly crushing this lane. It's not going to get any better for Apex. And so far, yeah, Ash Zyra continuing to be so annoying. Apollo actually still had aggro from that Thorn Spitter. Took a volley to the face as well, and he's just running out of HP. Yeah, they need Shrimp here pretty much now. They see Santor in mid trying to help GBM out because he's low on mana and HP and needs to back. But meanwhile, on the top side, Shrimp walking around. You can see No Shrimp wards see him. Hanging out there. There's a ward inside the river, so they're going to see him as he leaves. And he'll know that he's but spotted. because This is the time to go. He's been spotted by the ward. There's the retreat from OQ. And will they reach Kiwi Kid? No, they won't. He just ward hops away and says, well, we kind of have to get some CS. But Wait. no. But Shrimp now actually taxing the wave. They're pushing in a really good for the play into OQ. They're going to land a Q and an auto attack, but nothing else. That was honestly a bit too aggressive. I didn't see that ever working. And now Shrimp rooted up, takes some more damage. 
Yeah, it was too aggressive because Shrimp had used his Q on a minion and took it. Right. If he had actually had it for when special tagged, then he would have been able to get close enough, maybe force a flash out. We'll see what happened. But well, we'll never see what happens. Ray's still dueling battle, though, with Quas right there. You see that Quas actually getting the Santorin. advantage of this one. Plus eight, Santorin around the back side as well. And keep in mind, Ray is very low on health and suddenly says, there's a Gragas behind me. I don't want this kind of present. Can you please get away from my lane? Uh-oh. Santa known all about his presence. And Easy yeah, to die, Ray too. misses the shield. There's oh. the flash. There's the solo kill. At the very least, no gold to Quas, but a great gank comes through all the same. And that's a lot of gold and XP missed by Ray. Yeah, at that point, Ray... They weren't going to reach him in time. It was too late. Santorin was able to sneak in there. And then he had enough damage. No problem. And if Quas pushed the wave up, Vladimir's one of the easiest champions to turret dive with. Yeah. Not Ray making the right choice to die before it was too late, I guess. Level 6, though, on this Vladimir Quas got to feel pretty good. Up 19 minutes even before the yeah. kill comes through, or I guess after as the wave gets pushed out. But, but once again, Energy doing a great job in the top lane. This time around, actually, I think it's an advantage that Quas can keep. And that... Honestly, bodes quite well for Energy's chances this game. What I tell you, you get first blood and you're going to lose. And there you go. You're winning top lane, you're eventually going to lose. You're going to rubber band back on you. Yep. But yeah, Echo has a lot of matchups where if you actually play too aggressively, you run out of mana, you put yourself in bad positions. And speaking of bad positions, Kiwi Kid. Yeah, way too far up. Somebody heal for him. There's the flash. The ignite is on as well. The chase, the follow, the damage up, but not enough to kill him off. But he's still losing a summoner spell. Two burned on both sides, actually. Kiwi Kid. Using his flash, the heal down from OQ, and a special burning both of his. A lot of things around mid lane. Yeah, we'll see if anything happens there on that side of the map. Shrimp wants in. He was spotted by a ward as he walked into this part of the map, though, so shouldn't be any real surprises for GBM. And just playing safe, playing Gangplank to scale, not to be incredibly aggressive. But that seems to be the opposite for Ray. Ray just keeps trying to stat check against Quas and. He keeps coming up a little low. He's going to do it over and over again, but Ray is actually going to start losing it. He's just Every time he goes in, he's just going to take poke, harass, mm -hmm. and slowly get whittled down. Yeah, one of the big parts of the Spectre's Cowl is not done for him yet, so all that sustain he would have liked to have just doesn't come through right now. He's just too short on gold to have the item in. Meanwhile, that is already done for Quas, and he's oh. just fine. And now the push in for the He's missing summoners, but the knockback. Yeah, it doesn't actually push him back in because he got the shield up. So now it's Santorin flashless on the wrong side of the fight. And Ray's teleport coming in, maybe just in time. Jumps over the wall, still gets the damage and gets him off. Just completely blocked all the options for a body slam. Takes him down. Two to one Apex. Keen looking for Quas here. Gonna try to use the Swain against him, but uh, everybody's here. Quas has to run though, and he's getting slowed repeatedly now. The attempt for Keen to chase this one down. The kick into the wall, the damage up coming across. The heals don't mean anything. And Quas goes down. Apex finding two kills now. Apex once again turning it around. This has happened so many times in this game, the last game. Something looks really bad for Apex, and they're able to either go even or get an advantage from the fight. It seems like energy, when they find a fight, they overcommit. They're putting too much into it, and they aren't they aren't calculated about it. It's just kind of throwing themselves at the fight, hoping that they win. And it's kind of what it feels like. And you know, the poster child for that is Quas, who teleported in, got no assists, just died for arriving. I mean, that's that's not something you ever want to do as a teleporter. You just stay in your lane instead. So rough stuff again. Still misplays for Quas, and it's heartbreaking to see a you know very beloved player, but just not having a good game. Yeah, and Santorin goes in. And then he gets TP'd on. He already used his body slam to get there. It was a bad ultimate anyway. The shield was up. Yeah, and then the ultimate, play. the ultimate comes down as well from GBM to try and do some damage to Ray. So he's just trying to save him at that point because GBM doesn't have his own TP. But Keen was already roaming down there by that point. Yep. The play in the first place was not a play that Santorin should have been making unless he had a way to completely blow them up. Boss just gets taken out. Single pool still on cooldown. The chains don't work quite nicely to keep him from moving anywhere. And, well, Apex, look at this, 700 gold up. And despite how bad the two-on-two -two was, how rough that lane was, we saw the beginning of it, Apollo's actually up one minion right now. So they've managed to completely turn around something that was super, super rough, a terrible lane matchup, all, all things considered. And, well, they're sitting on a couple of assists. Kiwi Kid, sorry, Special on three assists himself and really, really turning all this around. We can see what's happening in the mid lane, and it was GBM trying to help earlier. Has to eat an orange, has to run away from a big, scary bird. Oh, that fire touch. Yep. Yep, looks like that's what he has. Rocking that. Makes sense. 
But yeah, he has to push GBM out because it's Rod of Ages to Sheen. GBM, GBM is basically he sitting needs on, to buy. He's sitting on 2,000 gold. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You were exactly ah, right, Zyri. Yeah. That was solid. <laughs> I checked. I was like, did you already look? I didn't see you press that button. Last no. time I looked, it was 1,600, so I took a guess. You were really good at guessing. Well done. By the way, though, GBM really getting worn down, though. Keen wearing a blue buff. GBM has one, but... Oh, man. Shrimp nearly goes for the kill right there. Good teamwork. Keen walks in, says, you can jump to me. We'll be friends. And now that they see the dual lane top, they know that they can take this Ocean Drake for themselves. So Apex is going to pick that up. And Shrimp joins to have the smite nearby, and Swain, Keen, just continues to push mid lane out. I think the way that this game is going right now, Apex, they need to keep this lead. They need to actually balloon this lead, because the composition from energy is just so scary. It's incredibly scary. If Zyra starts getting gold, Ash, any of these members start getting any kills, it's good. Even if the support does. Yeah, absolutely. Honestly, there, there's plenty of good scalers here. So I think as Apex, you have to keep that pressure up. You have to keep going. There's always that threat of a late game. But honestly, we've not seen a lot of late game coming from energy. They've made one happen, but more often than not, they're just getting overwhelmed and they keep getting overwhelmed when the game ends. And hey. Hopefully turn it around. GBM pops the ulti. Just to clear the wave. Yep. Through the bot lane, and it didn't mean anything. The turret goes down anyway. He gets the farm. Congratulations, but... Apex still get the objective. One turret for them. The top lane is still being attacked, and there it goes. You see the announcement right there. Red turret destroyed. Energy's duel have knocked that structure down, so at least a trade is not bad for the team that's currently losing and wants to stall for late. And it looks like three members of Apex are coming up from the bottom lane after pushing in that turret. Uh-oh, Quas. They're almost behind you. Almost, but they aren't going to go for it. He said rotating around here, but look at this Kiwi kid coming down. It has a flank onto Keen. Watch for the arrow because they're going on a Keen right now. Planet damage on the him. A couple of roots back and forth. The plants were there for a bit. Looks like nothing else gained. And Keen is able to walk away safely. Nothing quite grabbed. Ward control going back to energy now in this jungle. The pink ward that was recently placed by Apex has been killed. But they're playing for the red buff. They get that onto Shrimp. Nice pick up there. And it's like, hey, buddy, can I jump to you? Yes, thank you. Nope. And this time around, Keen really does get grabbed him. He's got nowhere to go. Kiwi kid gets the lockdown. Oak, you had the arrow as well to land. The two of them take down the Apex mid laner. Well played. I believe that's his first arrow of the game as well. He yes, hasn't he. been going for those cross map ones. He's just using it for that lockdown onto the Swain. And that's it. But like I said, the kill's going over. Very important. Whether it's Kiwi Kid. Oh, wow. Oh, the reset man. process. The knockup's there as well. OQ's going to die. The Q into the ward hop, into the flash, into the kick, into the Braum. Beautiful stuff. The trio take down OQ. And Shrimp, I mean, you talked about his performance on Lee Sin on energy. Afterwards, I remember Saint talking about, well, he really doesn't actually have that type of performance on Lee Sin. He's much better than that, right? And I clearly remember in that game, he was going for that play pretty much every time. And dying. I remember kicking it. He had, uh, there was an Echo Fox game or something where he kicked a Malphite, or he like won against Frog and Zanivia because of a kick. Okay. Remember that mid lane fight? Okay. And then GBM was able to follow up. So Shrimp actually is a good Lee Sin player despite the, his score lines that he had back when he played on Energy those few games. How do you predict that as OQ? At a certain point, you've got to realize you've got a flash, but like, <laughs> he's like, oh, he queued to a cannon minion, okay. Yeah. And then suddenly like, wait, he's behind me and I'm dead. It's too fast, so you have to anticipate it. Yeah. Once he's pressed flash and R, it's already too late, but it's like, once he ward hops forward, you have to flash when he's still not behind you yet? Like, And that could even just be a juke. Do you really just flash a ward hop in front of you? Like, yeah. that's insane. So, I mean, props to Shrimp. OQ, sadly, his flash didn't bring him to safety. Good follow up by Apex. And now 4 to 2 in the kill score, 1,000 gold up. Great pressure in the mid lane. GBM just Ooh. gets rid of the wave, though. So the builds here for the 80 carries, Apollo, he ended up with pickaxe, went into recurve bow, and then he finished his Runan's Hurricane. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Essence Reaver first for OQ over here. I think that's fine as a first completed item. It's just starting to go for CDR. I'm curious about a second item, though, because I've seen Hurricane, I've seen Static Shiv, I've seen a lot of different options. Uh, but I don't see Essence Reaver that frequently out of Ash. but personally, I like it. The high CDR, more arrows, more hawk shots. Let's be more of a controlled style, because he's got damage on his team anyway. He doesn't need anything but CDR. Yeah. More CDR on Ash, more boss map arrows, more playmaking opportunities, and that's what they need. If you look at the engage on the side of energy, it's really that arrow, a little bit of lockdown from Kiwi Kid, and then Santorin has to put his body at risk too, so 
Mm -hmm. If you can get that cross map arrow, it's pretty much a guaranteed kill. You think almost damage. any of them. Absolutely the case. So, things to watch out for for Apex. This game, though, still pretty close. 1,000 gold difference in the ulti in from GBM. The arrow, okay, a bit unwise. But it buys enough time for this turret to take a bit more damage. Now Shrimps are on the backside. So is Ray and the blow up. Oh, OQ is already dead. And it's time for a little bit more. A nice explosive cast buys some time, but it puts Keen right on top of the team. And there's the rest of them as well. And down goes GBM. He's all over him. Now Quas forced to run away as well as Zyra ulti to disengage. Kiwi could maybe could use that earlier. But a two for nothing. Advantage Apex choosing to go in and making the engage work. And they get to go back to mid lane, clear it out, push it up. They have the Caitlyn. You can put down the traps, and he's just going to continue to poke, try to get them off this turret as they zone from the side and from the front as well. Yeah, Ray really happy to run forward. Just get some damage out. Get rid of the minion wave. Delay as little as possible. Turret does go down two to one now in that score. Apex pushing farther ahead. Hey, even having the Ocean Drake when you're playing like this doesn't suck. Getting your health bars back up. Oh. Especially Swade is going to burn through so much mana in a team fight. <laughs> There's so many pings right now. Rift Herald, do Rift Herald. Get on the Herald. We've got three minutes. Hurry. Yeah. Looks like Ray wants to clear out the top side. They're going to prep the area and maybe take it, but Cloud Drake is in 20 seconds. You can see GBM used to the ultimate. That's two ultimates used there, which are great counter engage tools. Yeah. GBM now no longer has it to throw down in this fight, and OQ just gets picked up because he doesn't have anything left self kill wise. And Kiwi get off on the side, can't really do anything up the top. Uh, he got split up to the left, so he wasn't there for part of that fight right now. But look at this, it's Keen in a one versus two. Slowly, slowly running away. Now Kiwi gets here as well. Do they have the damage? Because GBM's starting to get worn down there, but Keen just doesn't have the health bar. He's still healing up, but he should be dropping. And yes, he does. GBM gets it with the crit from his pistol. And a little bit back now for this team. He's got that Trinity Force, he's got the pickaxe, and GBM can try to become that late game threat. I'm actually very surprised that Keen was down there past the midway point, because you just have to shove it up a little bit, and then you can get that Cloud Drake and pick up an objective. So it was an overextension there, and if you look at the top side, that frees up Quas to actually push his side pretty far up. All right. Well, a bit of breathing room for energy, not a bad thing. Yes, Gangplank prints money, literally, so the gold lead is in some ways worse than you might think, but enough map control goes to energy that they do manage to pick up one of these objectives, and the double teleport team now has better rotational speed as well. Next Drake will be Ocean. Oh, Rift Herald, though, on the opposite side has been started up. It's going to be Shrimp and Egg Special. This is like old Rift Herald. These are the two people that would, you would use to get it so you don't waste anybody else's time. Mm -hmm. Some boards aren't really picking up any guests, junglers at the same time. And then the top laner comes in and becomes a scumbag to take the buff. Ray deserved it all along. Great mechanics. And here we go yet again. I actually see it divided. Some people give it to the top laner. Yeah. Some give it to, if you're going to have a split pusher, you give it to the top laner. Or if your top laner's behind, I see a lot of people do that as well. To keep him afloat in the matchup. Yeah, but okay. sometimes I see it given to the jungler because it works on jungle camps. So you increase right. the speed of their clear yep. and they are able to get around the map just seconds, like half a second earlier per camp Very is sure. enough to just start adding up and get you far ahead. And keep in mind the chance that it's going to be stacked up before you get into a lane for a gank is pretty high. So you hit a turret, you hit a champion with it, and you actually can use that effect as a jungler when when coming across the map. So yeah, the question I, I have the, the use. Yeah. Question I have though is they gave it to the Echo versus the Vladimir. Is it enough to tilt the matchup? Because right now it's basically Quas having free reign in it, and every time that Ray tries to trade, he's using mana to do so. He's taking a lot of damage as he tries to retreat, and Quas just gets to stand there. Yeah, I don't know. It's going to be hard. You're going to see him walk in, get a bit of damage down. Okay, Quas lost a third of his health bar. He had a bit stun here as well for Ray, and Quas has to cut away from that one, but then heals himself back up. Ray in one more time, but well, there's a turret, so you can't get any farther. And Quas will have the empowered heal in a second. And yeah, he took some damage, but whoop! Health bar goes back up, and Ray still. You can see he's in relentlessly trying to wear him down. I just don't think it's going to mean enough. Well, here comes Apex everybody else. <laughs> yeah, here is everybody else. And well, Special gets a slow. And so never mind, Zentorin's here. Just kidding. We didn't mean it. Is this the turret will take damage, though. Gets the blue buff. Starts walking up, but this is going to be the turret going over to Apex. And Quas is maybe not just yet. Yeah, stick around. That's that's a big overextension. Quas in a bit of a 1v4, trying to buy a lot of time. Keen on top of him as the ulti in for a special, and Quas heals himself yet again. But Keen is tanking a quick ulti out from Ray, and the turret goes down. 
where was his backup? Were you not choosing to defend the team or not? That turret was going to die anyway. Okay, they get mid outer, but overstepped by Quas for sure. You did not need to delay them that long. You could see, like you said, that mid outer was going to go down given enough time. Ugh, rough stuff. Quas, zero and two. He had a very large mini lead over his opponent, plus 19 or so. I mean, significantly ahead, and now he's down 20. And yeah. Zero to zero. I don't, know, I don't know what you want to say. That's still not how we did that in 2015. So, Quas being out of the game, not, not too much of an excuse in this one. I don't know if he's... I think he thought he may have been able to actually kill Expecial and maybe Ray, but it was just That's really overconfident. so greedy. That really does seem greedy. So, rough stuff there, yeah, Quas. Hit. Hit level 18, then maybe he'll be able to do it. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Uh, seven times would have done it. Well, you're 20 minutes in. Well, yeah. It's like those times that you'll you'll relate with this. Mm -hmm. You play a vein game, you get six items, and you're just wrecking everybody, and then you start a new vein game. And I try to 1v3 and die connected. <laughs> and you're like, ah, oh, man. Yeah. Ah. That's just, that's just you could have just said, you play a vein game. Yeah. Like, let's be real. <laughs> Everyone knows what those veins are like. You say the name of the champion, and we got it. You come back, you're like, my attack speed is one fourth of what it was before. Yeah. This feels awful, <laughs> but you still play like you have 2.5. Yeah, which means I miss my auto attacks. I tumble early. <laughs> Cancel all of them. It feels so, because like the third one means so much too. And you're like, oh, I queued up Condemn already. He's out of range. Okay, yeah. I lose. Random aside, there isn't a whole lot of things in our game that actually scale the feel of a champion like that. Well, yeah, like attack is one does. of the very few. We have to reset your mind. And just be like, okay, that was the cadence between yeah. autos. You ever try to orb walk against a Nasus or a Frozen Heart? You will miss your first three auto attacks before you realize what the new attack speed is. It's actually really rough. Well, right now, though. Plus two. Yeah, sure. At least that one's like really obvious that it happened to you. 3,000 gold lead, though, Apex. We get back onto the topic of the game right now. It's a special tanking up a couple of attempted roots from Kiwi Kid. A bit early for Halloween, but it's okay. Level 10 on the Zyra is holding a level lead over Expecial's Braum, but doesn't mean too terribly much. Zyra's not that level dependent, to be honest. Instead of watching these teams continue to jockey for position. It's just kind of time dependent now. If you're able to hold an area for long enough and get enough seeds, mm -hmm. it's kind of similar to the way Alawi was on release. Now Alawi's a lot different. Yeah. You're able to actually get a, a whole lot more with mm -hmm. your vessel. Zyra's thinks it's secret OP. Uh, I, I tend everyone. to agree. <laughs> now, it's seen enough buffs. Uh, blame Scarzard. I, yeah. He probably wasn't in charge. 6 11 allow is probably pretty good, actually. Anyway, Here we cool. go, Ray. Yeah, stuck in a 1v2. Not, I guess, a duel. They don't, I don't know if uh, Energy read the rules, but uh, duel in, implies a 1 versus 1. And so GBM leaves and says, you're right, Quas, Have your duel. And then he starts walking back. Shh. They don't know that. They really want to get this, though. Yeah. Baron was cleared out. There isn't much vision from energy on that side, and Quas has continued to shove up the wave and threaten Ray. Um, right now, actually, both teams have a ward on Baron each, so there's no chance for that to be a threat. And so, yeah, why not dedicate your resources to the Echo? Yeah, had a uh, an invisible blue team ward and a, and a blue trinket red team ward, if that makes sense to you. Yeah. Shrimp, but again, with a red buff steel playing on the bottom side of the map, Ray's pushing enough that he feels safe to counter jungle down there. And it's just these slow advantages. Three and a half thousand Apex is ahead. Next break spawning very soon. That will be Ocean. And something I think is cute about this, by the way. You, you remember all the all the, the talk about Aushin? You know, is he going to be there? Is he going to be? Is he not going to be? Yeah, that and then we made Aurelian that, Soul. That dragon. Then we also made Ocean Drake. And Apex killing it right now. <sighs> we made the champion twice. You're welcome. <laughs> Everybody, you're welcome. Yeah. It's in the game. We actually snuck it in. <laughs> History of a Jagger Champion. Also a neutral objective. Lamaushin. Exactly. Oh, man. <sighs> that one was okay. Thanks. That one was okay. Thanks. I thought of that during the last one. I was like, I should wait until it, re <laughs> till it actually spawns and, and there's downtime, which there has been. Apex playing very slow metric advantages. And I'm curious to see when the next major push comes in. OQ has Executioner's Calling. Good job, OQ. You're the best. You've built that against Swain. We haven't seen that yet from Apollo on this Caitlyn, but I assume it's got to be next rim. No, it's Quicksilver Sash. You're on a tight leash here, Apollo. you got to be careful. There's a, there's a Vladimir, and they're scary. But he doesn't have it just yet. No Morellos either from any of the mages. Although Morellos has the new, or the old Athene's passive, where on kill and assist you get mana back, yep. which makes it quite good on someone like Swain. I feel like it's ironic because he self heals, but he wants to buy a Grievous Wounds item yeah. in some cases. 
But I realize like Swain's also really want to build tanky, so you wouldn't build like a raw ability power item most at all. Yeah, mostly you are uh, you're using the catalyst passive. Yeah. And again, another attempt right here. It's Ray playing hyper aggressive in the face of OQ and Santorin. Gets arrowed and then doesn't seem to really care. Mercury Treads makes him, yeah, kind of ignore most of the stun that comes out of that Ash arrow. OQ, his second arrow of the game. No, sorry, his third. He had one that killed off Keen. He had one that missed on the mid lane. There's his third that was shrugged off by Ray. At this point, why even build cooldown reduction? You can get <laughs> cooldown growth and you'd have the same number of arrows. the next mechanic in our game. Stop spoiling. <laughs> oh, make, somebody, that... make somebody's abilities go on cooldown. Anyway, that's called silence. That actually, yeah. That's called fair. silence. Fair. Yeah, thank fair. you. Thank you. Only one champion has that now. I think it's just on a Cassidy. Not Cassidy, uh, no. sorry, uh, Malzahar. No. Who else has it? Uh, Fiddlesticks. Oh, you're right, Fiddlesticks Soraka. has it. Okay, I'm wrong. I was off by literally a third. Like, <laughs> it's three times as many as I thought it was. It's probably even more. It'd I'm ashamed. I used to be a Fiddlesticks main, too. I'm sad that I forgot about that. That ability, like, basically never changed. It's still on there. Yeah, I know. I'm just dumb. It's too... It's annoying. <laughs> to fight against it, and it, like, triggers the freaking the runic echoes, so it just hurts you so badly. Oh, my God. You can't run away from it. That crow just like, ah, I'm gonna kill you! And it does. Oh, man, first Braum, now crows? Everybody's got this voice. Is that not how crows, crows sound, though? Let's be real. <laughs> All Prove of me wrong. Crows sound like that. No. Listen, listen to Swain. He's not a crow. His ravens. Also not a crow. They're close enough. <laughs> what? You can, tell, you, can you tell the difference between a raven and a crow when you look at them? Doesn't matter. Okay. No, Fiddlesticks has more. None Swain, of this matters. Swain has the other. You know what? <laughs> Speaking of crows, here we go. Ooh, <laughs> bullet to the face. Kiwi Kid has to heal himself back up. 500 gold down the drain for him. Going towards his next few items. Ooh, Root almost has a Santorin. Getting chunked down to half HP as well. He's got a retreat. Apex still in control of this map. But OQ does have Enchanted Crystal Arrow back up. There's always a chance to turn it right back around. Find the engage, find the knockback, and find the kill. But it's been energy. Really, the only one pulling the trigger is GBM. That's just on barrels. Yeah, GBM has been scaling, though. GBM. True. But they don't really Two have items. to mind waiting that badly. And I think, thankfully, for, for energy, Apex are getting drakes that aren't as good late game. Ocean drakes are much better early on, so uh, this sort of Ooh. double drake stack doesn't really mean anything. And there we go, another one down the upright. Three points for OQ, really acclimated to America well, but he's just not landing on any targets. Ray diving in, pops the ulti, but now he's got to run. He's dangerously out of health. And will Santorin. they find the kill? They actually can't, as Santorin is actually sectioned off. Notice the team will not chase through the kill on Ray. He bought enough time for a kill to come through for Apex. Eight to three, and their eyes are on Baron. Now, I don't even know why Santorin was over there. Now the smite is down. Apex, they're pretty free to go towards that Baron. Ray is the only one, but he has TP. Yeah, he, he can, can buy time. teleport back. Exactly. Two pink cords down right now, and Hawkshot or not, Apex say, I dare you to fight us 4v5 without smite. GBM's ulti is down. So is the Chana Chris player. So is Kiwi Kid's Stranglethorn. So what are you really going to find on this one? Again, Hawkshot comes through. GBM looks for oh, the, the barrel. Damage onto Apollo. Burns the heel, gets a shield as well. And they're not killing Baron fast enough, actually. These guys are running out of health. Apollo's nearly dead to Baron Nasher. Takes the Mikhail seal from Special. Great, a chase over the wall. Gets the solo kill on a Kiwi Kid. And now the fight has begun. Five versus four. OQ has nowhere to go. Keen is just all over their team. And this is going to be another. Two kills picked up. Three versus zero. Easy. Rather easy for them. But Santorin back up. And they were able to just... Stall it out and still turn it around. Quas, speak to stalling. Yeah, trying to run away, healing himself, running, running, running for dear life, but he's just got nowhere to go. Look, Santorin's not gonna help you. There's the kill picked up. Make that now four in a row. Five, you count, Santorin was dead earlier. Yeah. And this should be actually a much more secure Baron attempt where Santorin, I guess, could try, but it'd be pretty futile. Yep, they just blew this game wide open here. Three levels up for Ray over Quas, just dominating this top lane. Right, they gotta stop him. Yeah, X Special did it before, gonna do it again, and Ray, he knows the stun's gonna be off now. Baron, right in range. Oh, he gets stunned. Health. Yeah, good chain of stuns. Shrimp takes it down in time. Santorin made a nice effort. It was a really, really nice try. I thought he played it as well as he could have, but yep. honestly, Apex played well enough to not let him in. There's only so much you can do against five people, and well, Apex solid enough to make sure that didn't go in. 
And this is looking so good for Apex. Yeah, that was a really good barrel there from GBM. He was setting them up by this putting it on so like a Kiwi Kid. But then Kiwi Kid's off on the right side, and there are traps there. There's no reason to be on that side, but still gets picked off. And then the collapse comes through, and that's the two threats right there. OQ picked off, no problem. And then GBM as well. So Ray on this tank Echo, 4 1 and 7, performing incredibly well in this game. 50 CS up, handed a lot of resources. First blood, but then he also was handed the Rift Herald buff. All right, well, quick guess cast by Seda, and now we're back into this one here as Apex has taken down that Triple, I believe it was. I heard yeah. Dom. Uh, I guess now it's Dom, not Seda. I should take that back. But uh, Triple Ocean Drake for Apex. So if they ever do run out of mana, it's back to full quick. Uh, otherwise, though, yeah, I guess it'll feel good for Keen to just never have to run out anymore. Dip out of the minion wave, and it'll, it'll go back up quickly enough. Still probably prefer Mountain at this stage of the game, but that's what they got. And they'll have to make use of the regen, and they can overspend mana. GBM looking for the play on the backside, looks for the barrel chain, won't find it out of Apollo. And suddenly, though, he sees Shrimp, he's got Quas around, and again, OQ, I think three misses, two hits, and only one of them actually mattered when it did. Is Ash actually not paying out for energy? No. Missing over and over again, and he's a large part of how they actually need to start these fights across the map. I was surprised when Ash has hit six, usually you're throwing that arrow out pretty much as you hit six, trying to do it in lane, trying right. to do it across the map. Santorin come gank, I'll drop a GP, well, let's kill them. And yeah. we never saw that come out here. It's not like Caitlyn or uh, Brahma are that hard to kill when you land an arrow. You've got the base damage is there, but never came out of energy. They've only gotten three champion kills and two turret kills and one dragon kill all game long. Not a lot of good thing for them. Kiwi get forced around the map. Ray still wants in, and yep, he's got one picked up there. The tank Echo's working out well enough for him. Ult's back in to stay him. Uh, he's still gonna die. That will be a shutdown. One kill finally on the board for OQ, but top lane for support is not a oh, bad thing, so boss. now it's time for the re-engage, and they could get something done here. The Hemo Plague is on, and a big chase coming in. Keen's gotta run away. Popsicles goes to make that happen. It's special, kiting out as well. It looks like that Apex can get out with their skin intact. Their gold lead's staying at 10,000, they get away. And Kiwi Kid experiencing what Season 3 was like again when Zyra was popular as support. You're gonna get killed by assassins, whether or not they're tank. Incredibly squishy, one of the squishiest characters in our game. Even though he has a little bit of HP from his haunting guys, it really doesn't matter. He's basically papered to Ray. Ray will dive in and kill him pretty much every time if he singles him out. Causes everybody to collapse. See that even the snipe from uh, Ash helping, oh. but yeah, that gate the there. Santorin actually dove in there, yeah. used his flash to try and interrupt that when he maybe could have just body slammed in the way as opposed to actually going straight towards I it. I think he body slammed flash, like that might have been both. Yeah, he did. I'm just saying, like, body slam. Oh, with oh, I guess the he was block. going for the setup on the Caitlyn, like trying yeah. to, to, I guess, alter back in or something, but yeah, but I actually want to yeah. talk about what happened after that is because Quas started chasing, had a good engage. And then he pulled back when Keen started walking forward when he had Hemoplake ready to heal him up. And he was already about three-fourths HP. So I think Quas could have continued to engage and continued to press that. As Apex, if, I see, if I'm seeing that right, three ocean. Yeah. yeah. It's the sea now. They have the sea drakes. Yep. No, Actually, they the are. ocean's much bigger. They, have, they just have everything. World yep. drakes. Yep. I mean, you know, ocean is, uh, what, most of the earth anyway, so... Well, I get a puny mountain, we can have an ocean. I guess. True. I guess. Why not? Then again, can you live without air? Those clouds, you know, those dragons. Pretty important. I don't know what we're talking about, the theoretics of which element's more important to the world, but it's Cloud Apex. Clouds are now an element. Uh, sh you know what? Yeah, you're right. I kind of got off topic pretty quickly there. I'm wrong about all of this, but 35 minutes in, Apex have just been in control the whole time, honestly. It's been just a slow, methodical, you know, take 14 kills, take the dragons, take a Baron occasionally. Apex have just never lost control of this one. Energy haven't really found interesting things to do. We had Centaurin find some nice ganks early on in the game. We had GBM scale up and just be a gank plank. But after 15 minutes, we just, again, energy seem to have just their batteries drained and they're waiting around to recharge and the game ends before that happens. They're waiting to catch up now because their batteries were drained and now there's just so much power on the side of Apex. Ray, four levels up, now three levels up over Quas because he hit 18. He's capped right now. There's nowhere he can really go. You can see he's got needlessly large rod in his inventory, looking for a last item to fill out this roll and get himself some damage. And that's what that's what 
energy need to do is they need to stall. They need to just get GBM to six items, six item gangplank against this composition with the mortal reminder on OQ. If they're able to get picks, then they're gonna be in a great spot. I definitely think the energy have a lot of scaling in their favor, but it still is arguable because Swain is incredibly good. You also have the tank echo and then Caitlyn. Caitlyn is just a champion you cannot ignore. It's really just the fact that they have Zyra over Braum and then Gragas versus Lee Sin, really comparable in terms of scaling because they both yeah. are okay. Okay, I would have put Gragas up a little bit, but I trust you as the jungler yeah. I, over my opinion. Gragas feels really good at kind of this point in the game and then mm -hmm. he's, as you go on, you don't really feel too much better about your items. Okay. But I definitely think that a Lee Sin can compensate and be on Gragas' level if it's a good enough player. Okay. It looks like Shrimp wants to be that player. He's got himself actually uh, Lock of the Iron Solaria now going towards what's either actually almost definitely uh, a Black Cleaver at the end of his build here. So yeah, he went for the damage added in. He went for the Locket because the special went for the Randuins for the Ash to reduce that and yeah. also to have the Mikhails for the Ash arrow. Oh, and here we go. Qua slowed down by the Randuins active of Expecial. Speaking of, and Shrimp comes in for the stun. Falls with the Q, but Quas ignited on white, waiting for his Q to come back up so he can get the big heal, but does not oh. dodge the knockup. It's special landing it, lining it up just right and saying, here's how you line up people with that frail yard stun, making it happen. A good kill on the Quas, despite his ghost, despite his ulti. And Apex now have a lot of time to work with without an enemy top laner. 40 seconds to push in. Yeah, and despite that first pick Vladimir here for Quas, it is not working out at all all the first blood everything that went over to ray to set him up to get to this point now 100 cs up and he's a complete menace to the side of energy ray can do whatever he wants in this game he really can five two and seven he is huge right now on this echo even building ability powers though the nerfs never even happened more damage than he would have had before elder dragon should be cleaned out of the map easily. Energy not trying to go for a, a stall move and, and play for Baron at the same time as Elder Dragon. They slowly walked to that side of the map. Seemed like the vision wasn't good enough to know that play was even happening. Santorin takes a Rift Scuttle. Yep. He gets some vision over Baron, but even that, I think they still have to concede it. Yep, as Apex, I don't even think you have to back after that. You have triple ocean <laughs> with, yeah, yeah. with Elder. Good region now at this point. So they just back to purchase, you should head straight towards that Baron if you're Apex and Energy, they have to know it, but are you going to fight a three stack plus Elder Dragon comp? I, I feel like the door, the window is closing. Honestly, it is. And I mean, the thing is, this, this game has never felt like Energy was really trying to get back in. We just saw their attempts to fight too few and far between. The excuse they're playing a scaling comp doesn't seem to matter because no matter what champions you are, they're not winning these team fights. They're, they're losing the game before 40 minutes in, and maybe they do get that miracle comeback, but I mean, they came back from 11,000 down at this stage of the game before, so I guess there's the chance, but I don't see GBM making those kinds of plays again. Even for the ulti to delay some as Apex will kite away from there, and they don't want to have to deal with this because, yes, energy are coming in. They need some kind of huge team fight that turns the game around, but right in they go. Yet again, Apex pushing into this one, the Ocean Strike killing them, unless they take damage from a champion. So they are healing as they're walking forward. Now here comes a push on in, a flash to get away from Brahm's attempt at engage. Kiwi. Keeping it on the back line by himself, literally engaging as support. And Asher, a point blank on Shrimp means nothing. OQ drops as well. The bottom lane's dead. Next up is Santor. He's going to flash and body slam out, but all he's doing is really buying time till die later because Quas is now left alone. He cannot get away from this one. Pops and Zonia's. He's still an eventual death. The heal, yeah, that's nice, but he finally does go down. Apollo is unstoppable on this Caitlyn. 5-0 oh, and 4 on him. And at this point, take the 5v2, take the push to the base. Yep. You don't need to go for Baron, but, but they choose to. to. Exactly, there's 50 seconds on Quas, so they're still gonna go for the Baron. They're still gonna go for having even more. Apex are trying to convince everyone to pick them in fantasy. Guys, oh, we're gonna stack go. so many dragons, gonna stack the Barons. Wait. Pick us, trust us. We're gonna make sure we get 11 turrets is, every game. Isn't Saint the guy who said, screw your fantasy and would like tower dive at the end of games? That's right, <laughs> but now he's not in game, right? No matter how much he coaches this oh, team, it's up to how they wanna do this. He's gonna be angry about this. Yeah, this is the sticking <laughs> point now. How do you kill a Baron and make your, your, your fans feel better for picking you in fantasy? But the knockup is in and down he goes. Keen is unstoppable, Santorin is dead. Into the inhibitors, they go. Mid lane turret is gone. Continue push, big shield up for Ray and we'll see what's next for them. It's the bottom lane, it's a snipe on towards OQ, loses half his health for that one. Just the ulti out of Caitlyn. 
And down goes that turret. Keen is happy to take the turret. He does not seem to care at all. He's got the health regen. They've got the triple stacked Ocean Drake. The health bar is going to go back up pretty quickly, to be honest. And out they go, walking back to the right side. But they will not close the game out just yet. They've got more turrets to kill the top lane. There's still a turret alive. They got to get that one first. I was actually very surprised that that Baron fight even happened. It had yeah. to be really forced by Apex because energy, they were able to get them off of the Baron, and you just keep doing that. Because Elder, Dra Elder Dragon's two minutes long. It's basically one fourth duration left at this point. It has only 30 seconds left, and then it's like, okay. And then Kiwi Kid comes through and says, I'm going to root and try to kill Apollo. And then, boom, they come through. Shrimp tries to get engaged, and then everybody's just flanking at this point. So they walked up, walked a little too far up, yeah, and didn't pull out at the right time. Because if they had all gone at one direction, Kiwi would have been able to close off the choke point. And this speaks to the problem of energy as a team. If Kiwi Kid's the only one flanking, what is going on in that team anymore? It's not supposed to be Zyra's job. At some point, you've got to kill the Squishies, but clearly Santor and Quas and Jibium aren't doing it. Now we get one, maybe, final team fight. Oku's dead. He had nowhere to go. A nice kickback by Drift to make that happen. Going for broke, but it might just be broke anyway. Special running low on health. GBM does pick one up and maybe energy turn it around, but Ray's already picked off the mid lane. And there's no carries left for energy, honestly. They're losing members left, right, and center. Quas last one up, pops the sanguine pool. That's cute and all. He gets a couple of damage dealt, but it's a double kill for Apollo. Only the support is dead. The inhibitors are gone. They're not gonna kill the top turret. Sorry, fantasy owners, you're missing a turret kill here in this one, but you're still gonna be happy to have a 2-0 for Apex in their first series of the LCS. Come out with a 2-0 win and energy plummeting down the standings. And energy start off 0 and 2 in series. And that squad, you have to start saying, you know, they look like upgrades on paper, except for that top lane. How, where was Quas? And as the weeks progress, where is this squad? Where do they sit? Are they still a playoff team? Because Apex might have just taken their spot and proved that they are a team that the hype that St. Vicious has been giving them might be real. I think the hype is pretty real. I liked Apex overall as a team. I liked what I saw from Ray. No matter what started out in the games, he certainly came out swinging by the end. First blood, get killed by Santorin, come back, smash your lane. Yeah, he's definitely the get person. Get killed twice, smash your lane. Exactly. He's definitely the person that I'm looking at moving forward in this squad because a lot of these guys are rather known quantities. And it's always when that new guy comes through and you're like, okay, we haven't really seen him. Ray seems to live up to his hype, which was nothing. <laughs> so he's going to go even further than that. He exceeds Fair. it. So Ray, somebody you have to keep your eye on moving forward. And by the end of the game, Ray actually, he finished the death cap, and then he still up for a Lich Bane. He just started transitioning more towards ability power by the end of it all. And hey, when you're scrolling 7, 2, and 11 by the end, I, I kind of like that. And honestly, even just yeah. take it seriously, I think Apex could use some more damage by the end, and I think Ray filled that, that profile well. Everyone's scoreline on Apex looked really good. Shrimp went unkilled on Lee Sin, you know, the Black Cleaver done by the end of it all. He even got uh, the... the <laughs> The Eye of the uh, Equinox Sightstone upgrade. He yeah. should get extra health. Why the heck not? No, it, Everyone went big. It's actually funny because I saw a lot of people go for the uh, Ruby, the Ruby Sightstone mm -hmm. on the jungle. And I'm just like, you don't really have any activatable items. I mean, he's got two, but he still went for Eye of the Equinox, which yeah. is HP. It gives him more gold if he's sharing with somebody. You know, sure. More gold for his team. But yeah, Especial also went 0, 1, and 22. And it was a big team effort to get that first blood because yeah. Keen was there to push GBM out of lane, zone him with the Q, and make sure that he can't check. Everybody sneaks into the side, Santorn walks up, and then it's Special who tags him with the Q, and Shrimp gets the follow-up. And Ray's really the cleanup. There's just like, yeah. here you go, Ray. He, he learned E level one and joined in and said, yeah, I deserve that four. And I go, that was me. They give him a lot. They actually they gave, really him, do. They gave him the kill. They gave him the Rift Herald both, both games. games to try and set him up. So you can see that everybody on Apex is kind of giving Ray the resources so that they can then go on and do their own thing because yeah. Ray gets to go off and just wreak havoc on the map. They really do seem to just kind of send him out and then the other four kind of played League of Legends together. And look, that that has worked so far. Now the question is, they're up against a team and we're beating a dead horse, but it, it, it has to be said, like Quas is not playing very well. And so if you can do that against Quas, okay, that's nice, but what about Darshan? Like what about the other really good top players? What about Impact? What about Huni? Like does that, does that keep up? And look, a 2-0 is a good win. That's solid by Apex, but there's many more matches to be had. There's still many more tests to be to be shown for them. And, and I want to yeah. see how much farther this team can go, because I think it's going to be very interesting to see what else can happen for Apex here with this lineup. So that's going to do it for us in this one. To break down that series, let's send it down to Azale, who is with one of the victorious.